Now that more people have been paying attention to the House of Commons, but more specifically question period, it's becoming a lot easier to kind of label the different members as to like their roles, right? Like Pierre Polyev, not only is he the leader, but he's, he's smart. He's very witty. He's quick on his feet. He doesn't stumble. He's very articulate. Andrew Scheer, kind of the class clown, right? I absolutely love him. I think he's awesome. He's also very, very smart, highly intellectual individual, but he's also a jokester and a prankster. And you're going to see that uh, through the clip that I have to show you today. But before we get into it, I want to encourage you guys to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel, as well as remind you that you can get a matching sticker as the one on my microphone. Uh, but this is a sticker bundle. It's 20% off. The link, to this, link for this is down in the description or the pinned comment below. Klaus Schwab penetrated just Justin Trudeau, actual words that he has said. This isn't just a play on anything. He's literally said that he has penetrated Justin Trudeau. Freeland on a broom, Trudeau missing on a milk carton. I did not see that coming. Speech you hate does not equal hate speech. Link for all those is down in the description below. Without further ado, let's get into this video. China Capel. The Prime Minister must still have sand in his ears from his Jamaican vacation. That's <laughs> the, I can't hear the outcry from the most Canadian Andrew Shear thing to say. Carbon tax. While he was lining up at the all inclusive, Canadians were lining up at food banks and grocery prices jumped again, 38% higher than baseline inflation. Now, Common Sense Conservative Bill 234 will help bring prices down by taking the tax off of farm production. The only problem, problem, Liberal senators gutted the bill. Yep. Will the government reject the Senate amendments so that the tax can come off and food prices can come down? Yeah. <laughs> There you go, big guy. The Honourable Rice, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, our government ah! absolutely Sorry. understands that the <laughs> Holy shit. And cost of living are challenges for Canadians. That is why we are aggressively working across the country to build more... I don't know what the f*** kind of reaction that was. ...accelerator <laughs> fund with more than 30 agreements in place across the country <laughs> to 500 <laughs> new homes being built. I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaker is just seen her face scared the shit out of me. Conservatives cut. They know how to cut. They don't know how to build. And what Canada needs right now is builders. <laughs> the member from Regina Capel. We'll cut the waste. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's driving up inflation in the first place, like the infrastructure bank, like high-priced consultants, and like sending money to the Asian infrastructure bank to build projects overseas instead of here at home. But the question was about the carbon tax and why the prime minister is so pathologically obsessed with it. He doesn't mm -hmm. care that Canadians are going to food banks or that mothers are watering down milk or that seniors are skipping meals. He even sent one of his ministers to go bully liberal senators into gutting the bill so once again mm -hmm. will they reject the senate amendments so that the tax can come off farmers and food prices can come down drop a w in the chat for sheer deputy prime minister he's up against the witch you know mr speaker you know mr speaker talk about working families everyone knows those are crocodile tears this is the party that has voted against early learning and child care a revolutionary national program which is bringing down costs for hundreds of thousands of families across the country and allowing women to go to work these conservatives have voted against the canada child benefit a huge support for families across the country and mr speaker they're going to vote against dental care too excellent Let's get up to a thousand likes, folks. Let's just get more people in here. It's an opportunity to help families and help families struggling with high food costs. Bill C-234 is back in the House after Liberal appointed senators mm -hmm. delayed and gutted that bill. This is a common sense conservative bill that will give carbon tax carve out to farmers and ensure that Canadians have access to affordable Canadian grown food. But when the Prime Minister quadruples his carbon tax, farmers will pay a billion dollars a year, driving up food costs even higher. So will the Liberals reject the Senate amendments, take the carbon tax off farmers, and lower food prices for Canadians. Yeah. The Honourable Vice Deputy Prime Minister and Mr. Finance. Let me tell you what is common sense for working families across our country. 
it is common sense to have a national system of early learning and child care with fees reduced by 50% across the country and down to $10 a day in seven provinces and territories. It is common sense to support hardworking families with the Canada Child Benefit that has lifted millions of children and families out of poverty. And it is common sense to do what we're going to do this year, which is provide dental care to our seniors having provided it. Dude, to she children. just reminds me of a witch riding a broom. Like. Big round of applause there. The Honourable Member from Calgary, Midnapur. After eight years of this Liberal NDP government, scandal continues to follow them. With the Arrive Can app, Liberals insisted there were no forged resumes. Fact, almost 40% of the resumes GC Strategy sent in were forged. Wow. Liberals insisted security was never compromised. Fact, almost 80% of all contracts did not follow security protocol. Liberals insisted procurement rules were followed. Fact, the system was rigged in favour of GC Strategies. So so I have a question for this world government. What kind of operation are you running over there? What kind of operation? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Mr. Speaker, what we expect from the public service is to implement contracts based on government policies that follow the rules and procurement policies. And Mr. Speaker, when we were aware... I'm going to ask colleagues to please uh, have an opportunity so that I could hear the answer from the Honourable Member, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary from the top, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. When our government released government policies during this global pandemic to help save Canadian lives, we expected the public service to implement these contracts following the procurement policies and rules set out by this government. Mr. Speaker, we are concerned with some of the initial findings. So is the CBSA president. That is why she has already implemented measures, including calls calling in the police when necessary, as well as condu conducting more internal audits. And there will be consequences for anyone who did not follow the procurement processes. Mm -hmm. The Honourable Member from Leeds-Grenville, Thousand Islands and Vito Lakes. Well, after eight years of this NDP Liberal government, we have a Prime Minister who's been caught misleading Canadians multiple times. Most recently, it's his $84,000 gifted vacation to a luxurious Jamaican villa. Now, this is what he told Canadians was that he was paying for it, but we don't know what he told the Ethics Commissioner. But now we do know that, in fact, it was a gift. He didn't pay anything. He took an $84,000 gift. The Ethics Commissioner said that, unlike what the Government House Leader said, the trip was not pre-cleared. So when will this Minister and this Prime Minister start telling Canadians the truth? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, of course the member was able to hear this directly from the Ethics Commissioner this morning, but he appeared at committee and has been very clear on this matter. He confirmed that the office was consulted by the Prime Minister's office before the Prime Minister and his family went on their vacation, and he confirmed that his office provided advice on this matter and that the Prime Minister took the advice and went on a Christmas holiday with his family, Mr. Speaker. The Commissioner told committee members that as far as he is concerned, there is nothing further on this matter. 